Good morning, everyone. My name is Lindsay, and I would like to welcome you to Storytelling with the Missouri Historical Society. Thank you for being here. We're so, so, we're so excited for you to join us virtually today, and we invite you to come back every Friday morning at 1030. We're always right here online doing storytelling for you. And also on the second and fourth Fridays of each month, we offer storytelling in Spanish. We are so grateful to our Missouri Historical Society members. Your funding helps support these programs, as well as the members of the Zoom Museum Tax District. We appreciate that funding as well. And we have some really wonderful sponsors, PNC Grow Up Great and the Dana Brown Charitable Foundation. Thank you. Today, Storytelling is really, really special. I'm about to introduce you to our special guest and she is in the History Clubhouse. The History Clubhouse is currently not open, although all of the Missouri Historical Society spaces are open, including the museum in Forest Park. If you would like to come visit us, check out mohistory.org to learn about the new systems, which include getting free tickets for the museum in advance. And please know that even though we are here, again, the History Clubhouse is closed for the time being because we just want to make sure everything stays as safe as possible. But we've got a variety of virtual programs like storytelling that we bring to you online. So with that, Elizabeth, can you turn your camera on? All right. So Elizabeth is here. She is going to share her new book, Ruth's River Dream. It's the story of Ruth Ferris. And Elizabeth is in the clubhouse. And Elizabeth is a really good friend of our History Clubhouse mascot, Gloria the Gargoyle. So Elizabeth, take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be with you here today for virtual storytelling and to see my good friend, Glory, and to share my book with you. But before we start, just like always with Missouri Historical Society storytelling, we like to sing a song with Glory. Are you ready, Glory? Okay, it goes like this. It's just like if you're happy and you know it, but with a little bit of a glory twist, it goes like this. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story and you want to sing with glory, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story and you wanna sing with glory, if you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, shout hooray. hooray. If you're ready for a story, shout hooray. hooray. If you're ready for a story and you wanna sing with glory, if you're ready for a story, shout hooray. hooray. Yay, good job, everybody. Gloria, are you ready for the story? Okay, you go to your seat, all right? Say bye to Glory, everybody. And now for Ruth's River Dreams, written by me, Elizabeth Pickard, and illustrated by Katherine Graham. We're not, we're having just a little bit of a problem. There we go, here we are. Gonna start showing you. Ruth's River Dreams. And here is Ruth down by the Mississippi River. This book is dedicated to Phoebe, Kurt, Lydia, and dreamers everywhere. And that means you. A very long time ago, even longer ago than your grandparents can remember, there lived a girl named Ruth. Ruth liked to read. She took good care of her pets. Best of all, she loved to play make-believe outside. And look at that, Ruth has a cat and a chicken as a pet. They pretended to be swashbuckling pirates or fearless Greek heroes or great explorers anybody who sailed on ships. Even though she had never seen a ship in real life, Ruth thought they were the most interesting things in the world. There are no oceans in Missouri, you see. 
And there you see Missouri in red, right in the middle of the country, no oceans. But she could imagine. One rainy day, Ruth was bored. Her dog was taking a nap, her cat was hiding, her friends were all at home. She was tired of all of her books. She looked way down low and way up high, searching for a new story. Finally, way up in the highest corner, she found it, something new to read. Ruth pulled out the book and opened it. There, written in spidery handwriting was, my autobiography. The name was her grandmother's name. And an autobiography is a story that you write about yourself. So her grandmother had written a story about herself. Stories unfolded from the pages. Stories about the first play her grandmother saw. And what was this? A steamboat ride. Her grandmother wrote about pyramids of fruit enclosed in nets of spun candy and immense bowls of jelly that were always dancing and trembling under the lights. Ruth laughed at the idea of the dancing jellies. Her grandmother wrote about hundreds of people on the boat, feeling at home and friendly, chatting on the broad decks and singing and dancing all night long. Ruth decided to find out more. These boats were Missouri boats, not ships from a faraway ocean that Ruth had never seen. Rivers, it turned out, had very special boats, all their own. Best of all, Ruth discovered that river boats weren't just plain old ships with square sails. River boats looked like palaces. They were painted in bright colors and had giant paddle wheels and fancy trim and wide decks. To Ruth, they seemed as light and beautiful as swans. From then on, when Ruth and her friends played pretend, they imagined they were riding on steamboats, avoiding snags and sandbars, and steaming for first place in races from New Orleans to St. Louis. When she did math in school, Ruth counted numbers by picturing barrels being loaded onto steamboats on the levee. When she went shopping with her mother, Ruth pretended she was buying things to take on a steamboat journey. When she rode on a train or a car, Ruth pretended the road ahead was the river and that exciting things were just around the bend. Let's try imagining like Ruth. Let's close our eyes and imagine that instead of the computer screen in front of us, there's a beautiful wide river and it's flowing ahead of us and we don't know quite what's coming around the bend. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? It could be an eagle, or it could be rocks with paintings on them, or it could be a great big city. You never know what you're going to find. Now, when Ruth grew up, she became a teacher, but she never forgot about steamboats. She used steamboats to teach kids about everything from math to reading to social studies. You name it, Ruth could use a boat to teach it. Friends introduced her to old steamboat captains. She even saved money to go on a steamboat trip where she met pilots and engine men and roustabouts. She listened to all of their stories and wrote them down, especially the tall tales. Ruth collected all of the steamboat things she could find. Her family thought that she had better things to spend her money on, but Ruth didn't care. Soon, whenever anyone had a steamboat or a river question, they asked Ruth. When the Golden Eagle steamboat sank in the Mississippi River, Ruth had the pilot house brought to the school where she taught so that her students could play on it and pretend to steer it down the river. Later, she moved the pilot house to a museum where Ruth was in charge of teaching everyone to, who came to her river room about steamboats. And that museum is the very museum that I am sitting in right now. Even when she was all grown up, Ruth still dreamed about journeys on steamboats, always on the lookout for the next adventure coming around the bend. 
the end. I want to thank you all so, so much for joining me today. And I think, Lindsay, are we going to take a few questions? Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing the book. It was so wonderful. I really love the pictures and the story. And I know we've got several people watching. Those of you watching, you can go to your chat box from the Zoom toolbar. And if you put in a question or a comment, Elizabeth and I can see it, but the other viewers won't see it. So if you have anything you want to ask Elizabeth, go ahead and type it in there. And Elizabeth, I would just start by asking you, can you tell the kids out there listening today what it was like to write a book about Ruth, to, to look up information? What, what are the steps you have to take? Thanks, Lindsay. That's a great question. So the first thing that we had to do was to um, find out as much as we could about Ruth. And it turns out that a lot of her papers, a lot of her diaries, a lot of her family pictures are all at a place called the Mercantile Library, which is at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. It's on the lower level of their Thomas Jefferson Library. And so I got to go through and look at old drawings that she had made. I found um, materials that she had made to use in her classroom, diaries that she kept, and then one of the very coolest things was finding out about the Golden Eagle Pilot House, which as I said, is here at this museum and it's actually on display for the first time in a long, long time in our Mighty Mississippi exhibit. So even though the clubhouse where I am isn't open, people can go and visit that for free just by making a reservation. Yeah, and someone asked, is it a true story? So that's a really good question. And I have to tell you that I am a historian by training. So I have to be very clear. This is a made up story about a real person. So there are things in it that are real. Ruth really did say that she thought that um, steamboats looked as light and beautiful as swans. That's something she really thought. She really did start getting interested in the river when she found this story written by her grandmother. One of the things that I changed though, is it's not really clear how old Ruth was when she found this out. She said later she was doing some research and read this story and what she said was it set her afire with her interest over the river. And so we decided to set it when she was a young girl because it's very clear she always did love boats and ships and adventures. We have a lot of pictures of her hiking and riding ponies and swimming. She loved to be in the water and she wore a captain's hat a lot of the time. Um, so we didn't know exactly when that happened. So we decided to set it when she was a little girl. Thank you, that's really interesting. And how about some people are asking where we can purchase this book. I'm gonna tell you all, it is in the museum shop. If you have a chance to come by the Missouri History Museum in Forest Park, you can pick up your own copy and it's also available to order. And Elizabeth, as the author, do you know, are there still signed copies available in the shop? Do you know, I believe that there are still signed copies right now. The only place to get signed copies is through the Missouri Historical Society. I will check right now. And if she needs more books signed, I'll sign more before I leave. Oh, and yes, very important to point out that there are copies at the St. Louis Public Library for checking out as well. There are three different branches that have it. So if you love to go to the library, that's another way that you can read Ruth's River Dreams. And I will put up a link to our Missouri Historical Society shop so that you all can see exactly where you could order a book from. And I'll put that up during our craft time. I don't think I see any last questions. Elizabeth, are there any last things you wanna tell our audience today? Well, I think one of the things that's really important about Ruth is both how much she loved um, the river, but also how much she loved kids. One of the things that she loved doing was helping kids to imagine. And one of the things you might notice in the book is that Ruth is sort of sick of being stuck inside. And I think that's a feeling that everybody feels like right now. And so think about ways that you can use your imagination and the things that you're interested in even if you can't go out and do all the things that you'd like to do to have an adventure in your imagination. Thank you, Elizabeth. 
And one other audience member wants to ask, is it your first book? It is my first book. Now, I've been a writer for a long time, and one of the things that I did uh, here at the Missouri Historical Society when I used to work here was I wrote a lot of plays. And so um, it's a different kind of writing, um, but it is my uh, it is sort of linked to what I've been doing all this time, which is telling real stories and fun stories about historical people who aren't really all that different than we are today. Thank you so much. So at this time, we're actually gonna hand it off to Danielle and Victoria who are gonna lead some craft activities. So for those of you watching at home, you have a chance to get creative. Danielle and Victoria, are you ready? Yes, we are. Hi everybody. Hi friends. Oh my goodness. That was such a wonderful story that we read about the Mississippi River. I learned something new today. I learned that the wheel of the steamboat is inside the pilot house. So guess where we are? You see our wheel? We must be in the pilot house, right? <laughs> Can my friends tell me something you all learned in the chat box? Can you write in the chat box what you learned? That was a really cool story. Yeah. And another thing in the pilot house, does this look familiar to anyone? What happens if I pull it? Isn't that cool? Let's see. Oh. Lots of things people learned in the chat. So, I'm so glad that you all learned a lot. Because it's really cool how um, when Elizabeth wrote the book, she took parts that are true and parts that, that are a little bit more use your imagine, imagination. I think after learning about the Mississippi River with our friend Ruth, we can make our own steamboat. Can you spell it with me? S. T E A M B O A T. Steamboat. I know that's a long word, but just like what we learned from our new friend Ruth, a steamboat is a boat that uses steam and a paddle to move. Now we know that steamboats are super big and it will definitely take a really long time to make one, but we can make a move. A model is a copy of something. Yeah, so now we get to use a little bit of our imagination and we are going to be making a steamboat model today. Are you all excited? I can show you one that I made. Wow. Look, you all, we have our paddle wheel in the back. Can you see it moving? We have our steam coming out from the top. And we have a lot of windows. So I'm going to show you all how to make this. So for the materials, you are going to need a tissue box. You probably have one of these at home, right? You could also use something like a shoe box or whatever other box you have at home. You also will need some glue or some kind of tape so that you can stick things together. Um, you'll also need some pipe cleaners like these. You can, you can get really creative, as creative as you want to get. Um, I have some popsicle sticks here. Aren't they big? These are the baby popsicles. These are the big popsicles. <laughs> And we have, you can use something like wrapping paper or this tissue paper. Um, of course, we need construction paper, whatever colors you want. I have some blue construction paper here. Hmm, what else? I have some straws. This is my paper straw. And, you know, you can use anything you want, really. I have some cool scrapbook paper here. Aren't they pretty? They kind of look like the water. And 
Let's see. Oh, I also have aluminum foil, which is another thing you might have at home. So a lot of these supplies, hopefully, you know, you can find them in your house and you can make a really cool steamboat. So let's get started, huh? So I have this box here. It's a tissue box that I covered in a little paper. And I'm just gonna wrap it real quick in this nice paper. You all know how to wrap. It's kind of like wrapping a present, like maybe a birthday present. Here's my tape. Here's my tape. I'm not very good at wrapping this. I'm very good at opening presents. <laughs> what about you all? Are you good at wrapping presents or better at opening presents? I think I'm also better at opening presents. All right. Get our tape on here. You can see. Finish me up. All right. Let's wrap this up. And if I didn't mention before, you will also need scissors. So make sure you do this with a parent too, so they can help you, okay? And y'all, have you ever been on a steamboat before or any kind of boat? Mm, I have not. Well, I've been on a kayak. Where if I was the paddle, I had to paddle myself. You had to paddle yourself? Oh my goodness. Was it fun? It was so much fun, but I got so tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like exercise, working out. <laughs> have any of our friends been on a boat before? Have any of you been on a boat? I've never been on a boat. Well, wait, yeah, I have been on a boat. I forgot. <laughs> One time I was on a boat. What kind of boat? That's a great question. It kind of looked like a steamboat, but it wasn't a steamboat. It was a boat um, that I took in a different city. And so it was on the lake. It was pretty slow. It was pretty slow, but it was really pretty. We got to see the city and all the tall buildings in the city. I think that's the best place that you can see the city is mm -hmm. on a boat. Yeah, it was really cool, but I was a little scared because I can't swim. <laughs> but it's okay, we were safe. <laughs> That's why you always wear your life vest. Yes, very true. So look, we wrapped our steamboat. It's a little sparkly. <laughs> okay, so now we have our base, our steamboat. So I have these little windows that I cut out. I'm gonna glue some down, okay? Got my glue stick. I have one window. One window. I'm gonna glue on three more. One. Gotta stick it on there good. <laughs> Two. Three. Can you all count the windows with me? One, two, three, four. Great job. What should we do next? Shall we add a little, um, little chimney? Yes. And so you all, like I said, I learned that the pilot house is where we have our steering wheel for the boat and where we have our whistle for the boat. So I don't have a, you know, a paddle, um, a pilot house today, but if you have like a smaller box, you can put that on top and make a pilot house. Isn't that neat? So I have a little toilet paper roll here. See, you all can be as creative as you want. I'm going to wrap it with some aluminum foil. Going to make that real shiny. Real shiny. 
And I put tape on here before, which is why it's sticking. I don't have magical glue. Wouldn't that be cool though? So here's our chimney. And we can just glue this down on top. <laughs> I made the circle too big. Okay. And then press it down, but don't press too hard so you don't break your back. <laughs> and here, this is really cool. I have a cotton ball. So I have a cotton ball, and with the cotton ball, you can make smoke. Do you see this? It's like it's smoke coming out of the chimney. So we can glue this one down too. All you gotta do is pull the cotton ball apart a little bit, and then you get the shape you want. You can shake it a little bit, and then we just take our straw, we put glue on the top, little glue on the top, and then we just stick our cotton on and let it dry. See? Little puffs of smoke. This is the steam and steamboat. It does look like cotton candy, doesn't it? Uh, I want to try it. it. I want to try it. All right, so let's glue down our chimney smoke. We have one here. Same thing. You might have to hold it down a little longer so that it sticks. A little longer. <laughs> and then, you know, you can add whatever other decorations you want. You can put like a popsicle stick on the side, like this, and glue it down. You could also put, you could put something on the side like this. Ooh, and you can write, you could write Steamboat, you could write your name, and then Steamboat. So, Speaking of, can our friends put our name in the in your name in the chat box so we can say hi to you all? You can even name our steamboat. Yeah, what should we name it? Oh, how about? Um, you all have any idea? I can't think of one. What do you think? What 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 should we name our steamboat? Ah, Ruth. Ruth. Oh, we have Sarah too. I love that. Ruth Steamboat. I'm going to write it down. Great job. And hi, Sarah. Hi, John. Oh, my goodness. So many friends today. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing Ruth Steamboat. And then I have one more important part of the boat that we have to add to make it a steamboat. We have our chimney on top. What's missing? We have our windows. We have a name. It goes around and around and around and around like this. Can you guess? It's our paddle wheel. Oh, yeah. Yes. So in the back of steamboats, they have a giant paddle wheel. And that paddle wheel moves like this through the water. And that's what pushes the boat forward. Isn't that really cool? Yeah. It takes the steam and it pushes different parts inside the boat. And those parts move the paddle wheel. So this part is a little difficult, but you can do it. <laughs> so to make this, if you have some construction paper or if you use cardboard, you can cut out eight rectangles. So you have eight rectangles. I already glued together seven rectangles. So I have to glue one more on here. So let me find my glue. Here's my glue stick. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to the bottom. Add our glue. We're gonna stick 
our last piece on. So I'm also going to staple this just so it doesn't fall apart. All right, so we got our paddle wheel. There's eight pieces. So now we're going to fold them all in the same direction. So one, two, three, four, it's kind of like a book. Five, six, we're almost there. Seven, eight. I'm gonna fold this one the other way. Eight. So now let's spread them out. This is like a flower. It does look like a flower, doesn't it? You see all the pieces? So here we have eight different parts of our paddle wheel. And this paddle move moves like this in the water. You see it like this in the water. Ta -da. Paddle with your arms. Like yeah, that. paddle with us. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte and Emily and Angel. Are you all paddling with us? Just like our paddle wheel. All right, so we got this. So. To attach it, we can take our pipe cleaners and we put them on top. It doesn't. So this is the back of our boat, okay? So we're gonna put these, these little pipe cleaners on top like this. We're gonna glue them on the top and they're gonna come down and hold our paddle wheel. I'm going to use a little bit of tape because glue might take a little bit long to dry for this part. So I'm going to use a little bit of tape to tape down my pipe. Okay, got one side. Going to take the other side. One piece of tape and two pieces of tape. All right, so. I'm gonna bend these down just a little bit. I'm gonna bend it just a little bit like that. You see that's a bit. And now I'm gonna tape my paddle wheel in between these two pipe cleaners. Isn't that neat? That's so cool. I'm gonna tape it just like that. I just like tape because it's easy for me. But you can use glue, mm -hmm. you can use hot glue with parent supervision. Mm -hmm. You could use tape like me. Whatever is easiest for you. I'm gonna tape that down there. And then tape this one. Thank you. Tape this one here. It's always fun to craft with the buddy. It is. Let's get our paddle wheel all right. Can you all paddle wheel again? Paddle, 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 paddle. <laughs> and here it is. Here's our paddle wheel and our wow. steamboat that we named Ruth Steamboat. You all helped us with that name. Isn't Ruth such a cool girl? She's so cool. And that's it. And for my older friends who are watching, you can try a little bit more difficult version. And to make this paddle wheel, I used two popsicle sticks and I glued them to the side of our boat. And then I used a straw. Can you see the straw in the middle? I used a straw and I glued pieces of cardboard to the straw with hot glue. Yeah. And then I put it, I put the straw in a pipe cleaner. Well, I put the pipe cleaner in the straw and then I glued them to the popsicle sticks, like this. Yeah, and you can even, it can go really fast. <laughs> so this is our steamboat. 
Now, wouldn't it be exciting to drive your own wheel? So using our imagination again, we're gonna make our own wheel. So we can travel along the Mississippi River. So you can even take your wheel in the car. Here, this is my wheel with an adult and you can drive here just like this. And you can spot all the wonderful things that you would see on the river. Just imagine all the birds, all the fish, oh my gosh. So for this activity, you're going to need a paper plate, some crayons, can you see my crayons? And some construction paper. You can do whatever color you want. And some glue. So, oh, here we go. Some glue and some, of course, some scissors. So please ask an adult to help you out, okay? So first, you need to take the paper plate and you're gonna cut a big circle right in the middle, okay? And then you're gonna flip it over. So this will be empty. And you're gonna color all around here. So I have another one that looks just like this. It's a rainbow. I couldn't decide which one I wanted, so I made a rainbow one too. <laughs> so after cutting the big circle and coloring it, okay, you're gonna take your construction paper and you're gonna cut it into three small strips, just like these. You see, three small strips. So once you're done with that, you're gonna take each strip this way. You're gonna take each strip and you're gonna glue them right on here from one end to the other. See? And you're gonna do that all the way around. So try to space it as evenly as you can, okay? So it looks like a poly, right? It has triangles. So neat, and look, it looks just like our wheel in the clubhouse. This is so much fun, and I had to do my name glitter. <laughs> okay. So now you can go out and on your own adventure. That was so much fun, and it's so easy. So you can do whatever way you want. You can even put little spokes on it, like these. So you can hold it like this and drive all the way around like that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, steam ups are so fun, aren't they? I had so much fun crafting with everyone, my friend Danielle, my friend Elizabeth, and all of you all. I hope you had as much fun as we did. So let's recap what we learned today. We read a new book, um, and that taught us all about the Mississippi River and a very special girl named Ruth Ferris. She's really cool. Um, and what we can find there in the Mississippi River. We learned about the different parts of a steamboat, like the paddle wheel and the pilot house. And um, then after learning all about the river, we made our own models, our own steamboat models and our own steering wheel models. <laughs> Friends, can you tell me what your favorite part of today was? You can type it in the chat box. And while you're thinking of what your favorite part was today, I wanna to show you something really cool. So for our special story time today, we also have this really cool worksheet. So in this worksheet, there's different little activities you can do with your friends or family, like write my own adventure story. Do you remember when Ruth found her grandmother's autobiography? Well, we have some questions here that can help you write your own autobiography. We also have a fun um, imagine and draw what you would pack on a trip on a steamboat. And we also have some other fun crafts like making a spyglass to play I spy. And you can play that in the museum. So all of you all who attended today will be getting an email version of this worksheet and you can print it out at home and do it. They'll also be in the books that we sell at the museum here. Someone said their favorite part was putting windows on the steamboat. I like that part too. Look at all these windows. 
and you can put the windows, you can make them out of aluminum foil or whatever you like. I like that part too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would love to see you all steamboats or you all steering wheels. And you can show, um, you can show them off by asking an adult to take a picture of your steamboat or of your wheel. And you can use our hashtag, which is Clubhouse at our house on social media. So we really want to see you all's models and we would love to see them. So thank you again for coming to play with us today. And we hope to see you again soon. Bye friends. Bye friends. Thank you. you. Victoria, thank you so much for teaching us how to make a pilot wheel and a model steamboat. That was really, really fun. And thank you, Elizabeth, for being here thank to join you. us for your book. Bruce River Dreams is such a fun book. For those of you watching today, the activity sheet that Victoria and Danielle just showed, we're going to email it to you so that you can have it on your own at home. And again, there's links in the chat. You can watch the storytelling and the craft activity, and maybe you didn't get to do it along with us today. Look up the video next week on our YouTube channel. And again, there's the link for the museum shop. If you want to order your own copy of Ruth's River Dreams, that's signed by Elizabeth. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next time for storytelling. Bye.